Welcome back, students. So nice to see you all again. I'm sure you remember most of the course faculty, but I'd like to introduce them again and thank them for being here. Dr. Franco, say hello. Dr. Kang, Dr. Sao, Dr. Dunn, Dr. Cohn, and I'm Dr. Marshall. I believe that there was an announcement requesting confirmation of receipt of the syllabus, to which you may have already replied, but if you have not, please do so by today. Now let's take a look at the syllabus. In addition to listing the course directors and course faculty, you will also see the course description listed. This lecture will go into more detail on the course. Also listed in the syllabus are the course competencies. The first of these is critical thinking. What is critical thinking and how is it evaluated? Can anybody answer these questions? Critical thinking involves not only knowing the what and how of a subject, but the why and the what if as well. Developing critical thinking skills will be the focus during the clinical and other exercises in this course. We will use student self-evaluations as well as peer evaluations, and they will be used extensively to refine this skill. The goal of this course is to instruct the students using a Tybodont in the skills required to restore teeth in the patient clinic using indirect restorations. What is an indirect restoration? An indirect restoration is one that is fabricated outside the mouth and then cemented in place. What steps are required in creating an indirect restoration? All of these steps, the preparation of the tooth, taking of impressions, temporizing the tooth, making the restoration, cementing it, and adjusting it after cementation will be covered. In addition to doing clinical activities, students will explore and research topics related to fixed prosthodontics. We will use discussion, debate, comparing and contrasting, evaluation of pros and cons on various topics, those will all be integrated in the course. The student debates will also be peer-reviewed and will involve the entire class. Critical thinking skills will be polished and demonstrated in each of the student research and debate presentations. This course is intended to be fast-paced, interactive, and fun. The learning resources for this course include textbooks, lectures, videos, and other materials. The textbooks are found in your Vital Source textbook collection and include three different textbooks. If you look at your syllabus, you will find the date, the topic and activity that will be covered in the laboratory on the Sim Clinic, and which textbook chapters are going to be involved. It's important for students to read the assigned chapters prior to the simulation clinic because there will be unannounced pop quizzes throughout the semester based on reading assignments. Pop quizzes will be given at the beginning of the morning or the afternoon session. The main topics and activities to be performed in class are listed in the syllabus. Additional learning activities will be added as needed and will not be posted in the syllabus. In addition to research and debate, practical exercises, and textbook reading assignments, there will be lectures and demonstrations presented by the faculty. These are intended to focus on the important concepts, not to replace the students' textbooks. Please read the provided Student Guide for Prosthodontics 2 for more details on the learning methods for the course. This may be found online as well as in a binder located in the simulation dispensary. It is just as important to the course faculty that they be calibrated as it is to the students. So every morning, the faculty in this course will be calibrated on a weekly basis and will be using the same models, pictures, perio probes, and other teaching aids that will help the student develop their technical skills as well as their critical thinking. 
In order to ensure that each student gets adequate faculty attention, there will be one faculty member assigned to specific rows. The rows are color-coded and a grid will be posted. If any section requires additional faculty assistance, the course directors will provide backup. For example, as you see in the chart above, the rows that are color-coded in orange will be covered by faculty number one. The ones in blue will be covered by faculty number two. They each have three rows and their backup is course director one. Faculty assessment in the moment will help students make an early connection with the materials. Faculty will be having the role of guide from the side rather than sage from the stage. Critical thinking skills will be honed during the clinical exercises by having the students self-evaluate their tooth preparations, provisionals, or other exercises prior to getting faculty input. For more information on how this is done, please read the student guide. All assignments and assessments must be fully completed in order to pass the course. In addition to the clinic exercises and student debates, short pop quizzes will be given regularly. The quizzes will be 10 to 15 questions long. The questions are mostly multiple choice, but an essay question or two may be included. The one lowest grade in all of the quizzes will be dropped. There will be no makeup quizzes. So if a student misses a day when a quiz is given, that will be their drop score. There will be two written exams and two simulation skills assessments, a midterm and a final. The dates of those are listed in the syllabus. In order to maintain academic integrity during quizzes and exams, no notes, books, phones, or other electronic media or paper will be allowed in the room. Students may not leave the room in the middle of quizzes or exams, so make sure that you are prepared once you start to continue and complete. In order to pass the course, each item must be completed and receive a passing score. Students must get signed off for all assignments, take all quizzes, pass the final exam, pass every simulation skills assessment, and have an overall passing average at the end of the semester in order to pass the course as a whole. An incomplete, or I, indicates that a student has not been able to finish all required work for issuance of a final grade. An I must be replaced before the student registers for the next academic term. Each simulation clinic exercise will be evaluated on a form such as this one. Every step on this form will be checked off by the faculty member that is assigned to your row before you move on to the next step. This is vitally important, especially in the first few assignments. Once students become more proficient, their assigned faculty member may allow students to progress further prior to requesting a check off. The first section of the evaluation form covers infection control, safety, time management, professionalism, communication and interpersonal skills, as well as ergonomics. The rubric from Foundations of Patient Care was modified to apply to the simulation clinic setting and will be used by course faculty for grading. You may download this rubric from Blackboard it is also included in the binder found in the simulation dispensary. Most exercises will involve both a preparation and a provisional to be fabricated, mostly at different times. Your faculty member will return your preparation form when you are ready to proceed with the provisional for that preparation. Every exercise has a rubric for evaluation purposes. These are available for downloading on Blackboard. The criteria is the same for a procedure, whether it is a simulation skills assessment or a simulation exercise. Each step must be properly accomplished in order to have a successful restoration. Be sure that you understand all of the terms listed on the evaluation sheet. What's the difference between an occlusal reduction and occlusal clearance? How do planes of reduction relate to axial reduction? 
How does taper relate to a total occlusal convergence? What is the difference between a margin and a finish line? All of these questions and more will be answered in this course. Crown preparations will each have their own criteria for reduction, taper, and margin type. Be sure you consult the rubric for the assignment that you are currently working on. Remember that passing a simulation clinic exercise does not guarantee success on simulation skills assessments. Therefore, the student should ask as many questions and get as much faculty assistance as necessary to feel confident in their ability. It is the student's responsibility to ensure readiness to pass simulation skills assessments. Critical thinking will be evaluated based on the self-evaluation communications between you and your assigned faculty member. It is perfectly acceptable to admit that you do not know or do not understand a procedure or concept. This is the time to ask as many questions as you need to ask. There's no shame in nor penalty for asking your faculty member for assistance. The back side of the evaluation form contains a section for self-assessment and feedback. This section must be filled out by the student in order for the course directors to assist individual students in a timely fashion. Any applicable suggestions for making the course more valuable can also be reviewed and positive adjustments can be made in the delivery of the course while it is still in session. All evaluation forms will need to be turned into your supervising faculty member at the end of the clinical day. If for some reason you were not able to satisfactorily complete the assignment in the allotted time, your supervising faculty will give you a grade of incomplete. The course directors will then confer with you and devise a plan for getting the assignment completed. All of the necessary course forms can be found on Blackboard. The course content section in Blackboard has important and downloadable course information, including syllabus, and student guide for the course. Be sure to download and read this information so that you are fully oriented to the procedures that will be used. Attendance and general college policies are also covered in the syllabus. If you are late for class when a pop quiz is given, you will not be allowed to make up the quiz. One quiz grade will be dropped and students must have a passing average grade on quizzes in order to pass the course. If you scroll down past the course content section, every week a new section will appear listing that week's evaluation form, rubric, and class topics and activities. If you have difficulty getting access to the information, please contact your course directors or Isaac Stickney for help with IT problems. Any materials that are underlined have a link that can be opened and downloaded. Are there any questions? Please let us know. We want to make sure that this course is as pleasurable and instructional as possible. If you give us feedback right away, we will be able to make adjustments to make the course more valuable for you. All right, let's go do it.